You are very welcome as we join in worship online this week from each of our homes. Some parts of our worship were pre-recorded on site in the Occupy Center and others in other places. And I want to wish you a happy new year. In today's service, we are now led in music by Betty Beavis on the organ with the hymn, Be Thou My Vision. leave behind all that is past and walk together into the future. Let us trust in the God of new beginnings and worship the God of fresh hope. Let us pray. Lord of our journeys, help us this day to have eyes to see your leading, ears to hear your guidance, and a heart of courage, that we may journey faithfully and find your way even when the path may seem difficult and dark. Amen. And now Joan Weir will lead us in the singing of our hymn, As with Gladness, Men of Old. As with gladness, men of old. star behold as with joy they hailed its light leading onward beaming bright so most gracious Lord may we evermore be led to thee as with joyful steps they spend 
Just as the wise men set out into new territory in search of you, help us to step out of life's narrow tram lines. Forgive us for seeking you out only in areas we know and in which we are comfortable. In their day, the wise men were outsiders, yet were guided by a star and spoken to in a dream, their steps directed for your purpose. Forgive us when we fail to see or even dismiss your leading from unexpected places and unlikely people. Lord, forgive us. Widen our vision and expand our minds to search and discern you in all places and people, that we may be drawn closer to you. Father God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be born in a lowly manger, a heavenly king worshipped by earthly kings, yet destined to walk to the cross. Through his blood shed on the cross, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We read today from our Old Testament, Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epaph. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Here ends our reading. Now we come to our gospel reading today, which is from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. 
they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I'm sure that you've all been in the position at one time or another of searching all over the place for something. You start in the obvious places and then you retrace your steps and look in places where you may have misplaced the said item. Then perhaps you'll get others involved who might well frustrate you by asking well, have you checked in such and such a place, naming all the places where you, that you've already turned upside down? Then someone says something and there's an aha moment and the long sought after item is found. Today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew tells us the well-known story of the wise men searching for the newborn king of the Jews. And because they were wise men, they initially looked in the logical place. A palace was surely the right place to look for a child who would be a king. But this was not only the wrong place, but given the mindset of Herod, a highly dangerous place. They eventually find the person they're looking for by following the direction of the king's wise men and their understandings of the Hebrew scriptures. And when they got to Bethlehem, the place where they'd been sent, there was the star that they'd previously been following over the place where Jesus was. But where had that star been when they had taken their wrong turn? Was it obscured by a cloud as the so-called Christmas star or conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn was a few nights uh, before Christmas, much to many stargazers' frustration? Or had they trusted in their own logic instead of following God's guidance at a key time? Or had this star simply gone AWOL? Did God actually want them to go to Herod's palace first? If so, what does that say about what happens next, which today's reading omits with the massacre of the the children in Bethlehem. Matthew's Gospel doesn't offer us any answers to those questions. And sometimes as we look back over the past, and particularly the past year, with all the upheaval that it has brought, we can spend a lot of time trying to work out how and why we got to the place where we are. There are lots of demands at present for inquiries into the decisions of those in power. 
in the face of the, the pandemic. And there may well be a time for those. But uh, I suspect there may not be any clear cut answers. As there continues to be no clear cut answers as regards some of the things that have happened in this province of ours down through the years. And no amount of inquiries will clarify any of that. And in our personal lives, it is good to reflect on what we have done and not done in the past, the right and the wrong turns that we have taken. But sometimes we have to let the past be the past. To confess where we have got things wrong and seek God's forgiveness. And to offer forgiveness to those who have wronged us, whether or not they admit it. But at the beginning of this new year, it's time to look forward. We don't know what lies ahead. We hope that we will see significant progress in dealing with coronavirus and that those in power will be granted wisdom from God in addressing the many challenges they face. We may not look to the stars for guidance anymore. Today, we look more to science. But may we also find guidance in scripture, and especially in God's living word, Jesus Christ. Because unlike the wise men of old, we no longer have to go and seek. God has already sought us out. And in the one that the wise men were seeking, the child that they worshipped in Bethlehem, we find Emmanuel. God with us. The one who at the other end of Matthew's gospel, when sending his disciples out into the world, promised to be with them to the very end of the age. Normally, in this service on the first Sunday of the year, Methodist churches would normally share in covenant services and when i'm preaching at such services i invariably remind congregations that covenant means to go with this year we will actually share in our covenant service next sunday but we don't have to put off our commitment not to go seek but to respond to Jesus' command to his disciples to go out into the world and share his good news. Not to go seek, but to go with God wherever he would have us go. Let us pray. Gracious God, to all dreaming of a better world, give courage. To all dreaming of an end to violence, give peace. To all dreaming of freedom, give patience. To all guided by the star of compassion, give resources. To all guided by the fear of loss, give trust. To all guided by the need to be busy, give rest. To all led by the need to be powerful, give humility. To all led by the longing to draw closer to you, give encouragement. To all led to your table, give yourself. To all people and to all creation, 
Give your love, we pray. Amen. And we continue to pray that prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now for our closing hymn, we have a Betty and Joan playing for us the hymn, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided, Lord of the years, we bring That word, the word of life which fires us, speaks to our hearts and sets our souls ablaze, teaches and trains, rebukes us and inspires us. Lord of the world, receive your people's praise. Lord, for our world, when we disown and doubt him, loveless in strength, Comfortless in pain, hungry and helpless, lost indeed without him, Lord of the world, we pray that Christ may. Lord, for ourselves in living power remake us, self on the cross and Christ upon the throne, past put behind. Join me, please, in our closing prayer. Lord, as we continue our journey with you this week, this year, wherever you may take us, as we seek to live out our faith every day, assure us of your presence with us. Surprise with signs of your love in unusual places. Nudge us when you want us to see or hear, say or do something new. For Jesus' sake, amen. And God bless.